Well, my name is Sierra and welcome to my channel, Homemade Mathematics. Today we are going to be looking at how to solve two-step equations. If you don't know how to solve one-step equations or you don't even know what equations are, make sure you go and watch this video first. In that video, I show you how equations work and show several examples of solving one-step equations, which when we get to solving two-step equations, today's video, it's really the same thing as one step, except for instead of doing it once, we have to do it twice. So like I said, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna use the opposite operation to get rid of something, right? If we have x plus three, to get rid of plus three, we're gonna subtract three. But this time we don't just have one number with our x, we have two, so we have to choose which operation we do first. And it does matter. So the way I've always thought it's easiest to remember is when we're doing a problem or when we're evaluating an expression like we were in those previous videos, you're going to use your order of operations, right? You're going to do parentheses first, then your exponents, then multiply and divide left to right, then add and subtract left to right. If you need a reminder on that, I do have an order of operations video you can go check out. But that is when we are doing a problem or evaluating a problem. We are not doing the problem now. When we're solving, we are undoing it, right? If we have x plus three to undo plus three, we're gonna subtract three. So instead of going in order in PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, and subtract, that's what we do when we're doing it. So what do you think we're gonna do when we undo it? Right, we're gonna go backwards. We're gonna start by getting rid of any add and subtract, then get rid of our multiply and divide, then exponents, and lastly, our parentheses. Let's take a look at some examples of how that would work. So just like our one-step equations, we're gonna figure out what number is with our x on the same side of the equation and how we can get rid of it so we can figure out what x equals. Because remember, we don't wanna know what x plus three or x times five is, we wanna know what x is. So we have to get it by itself, right? You'll notice in this first equation, we have x, and this time on the same side of the equation, right? That line there is separating the left side of our equation from the right side of the equation, right? The equal sign splits those up. So now, yes, we have this two with x, but we also have this three on the same side of x. So now I need to get rid of two things. And so we have to decide what are we gonna get rid of first because it does matter. So like I said, we're gonna go reverse order of operations. So first we have to figure out what operations do we have with our x right now. So that two is next to x, which means we are multiplying and then we have plus three, so that three is being added on. If we're going in reverse order, we wanna start with our add and subtract, all right, which we have plus three, so just like we saw in one step, to get rid of plus three, we would subtract three because three minus three would get us two x plus zero, which is really just two x. But whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other, otherwise it's no longer equivalent. We can't put that equal sign there unless I do it to both sides. So 15 minus three would get me 12. Now I'm not done because there is still a number with my x. And this is just like my one step problems. We have two times x. So to get rid of times, we're gonna divide by two. Two divided by two would get me one x, which is the same thing as just x. Do that to both sides. 12 divided by two would get me six. Just like one step equations, you can guarantee you get 100% on your next test or quiz over equations because every equation you can check. You can evaluate it by plugging in for what you think x is and seeing if it works. If it works, you know you got it right. So guarantee yourself 100%. Let's go ahead and check it. And instead of x, we're gonna put six because that's what we think x is. Now this does not become 26, right? Because it was two times x. So make sure you put your parentheses there. It's two times six, not 26, plus three, and that should get us 15, which two times six is 12, plus three, 
would get us 15, so we know that x equals 6 is correct. Moving on to number 2, same thing. Look at what numbers are with your x that you want to get rid of. So we have 4 and we have a negative 5 or minus 5. Same thing. All right, so we have this fraction bar here, which we should know means the same thing as divide. And then we have minus 5. So our 4 is dividing with our x and our 5 is subtracting with our x. So again, we're going to start with our add and subtract. So to get rid of a negative 5 or minus 5, we are going to add 5. Right? But if we do that to the left side of our equation, we have to do that to the right side of our equation. Right? Negative 5 plus 5, we'd get x over 4 plus 0. Those would cancel. So we just have x over 4 left equals our 1 plus 5, which would get us 6. To get rid of divide by 4, we would multiply by 4. Right? Because 4 over 4 would get us 1x or just x which 6 times 4 would get us 24. We're going to go ahead and check that. So instead of x, we're going to put 24, that over 4, minus 5 equals 1. 24 divided by 4 would get us 6 minus 5, which does get us 1. So we know we got it right. All right, number 3 you'll notice is slightly different because we have that x plus 4 on top. So with the previous two, we always got rid of the add or subtract first. So you're like, oh, we're going to get rid of the 4 first. This one is different, though, because you'll notice that 2 is not just under the x. It's under the x plus 4, meaning this x plus 4 is now grouped together, which that's now not adding. That's actually parentheses, which you'll see, right, if we're going in reverse order, we're doing parentheses last, not first. All right, so we actually want to start with this divided by 2 first, right? Because fraction bar means divide by 2. Get rid of that 2 on the bottom, and then we just have the x plus 4 left grouped together. So how do we get rid of divide by 2? We multiply by 2 to both sides of my equation so that we get x plus 4 equals 6 times 2 which is 12, right? Now it's just a one step. How do we get rid of plus four? We would subtract four. Those would cancel so that we get x equals eight. And then we're gonna check it. So on top, we have eight plus four over two. So this again confirms my point, right? If we were solving this, we do the top of the parentheses first and then divide. So to undo, we do reverse order, which x plus four is 12 divided by two does get us six. So we know that answer of eight works and it is correct. So number four, you might notice there's two things that are slightly different from the previous problems we've done. Okay, the first thing is that this time x is on the right side of our equation, right? Here's our x, it's over on the right. So we're not getting rid of the 14, we're getting rid of what is with x which on the right-hand side, you'll see we have a 3 with x, which brings me to my second thing that's slightly different. You guys might be thinking, well, there's only one number with x, so this is really just a one-step equation. Why did you put this problem in here? But let me show you something. So that 3 there, that's a positive 3, right? There's no symbol in front of it, so we know it's a positive 3 minus x. Okay, that's not negative 3 minus x, that's a positive 3 minus x. So we want to get rid of that positive 3 first. All right, we could even rewrite this as negative x plus 3, which how do we get rid of plus 3? We subtract 3. Do it to both sides, all right? And we get 11. And then a lot of people want to just be like, okay, x is 11. But no, we got rid of that positive 3 we still are left with a negative x equals 11, which if you watched my one-step equation, you'll kind of know how that works, right? If a negative is a positive, then a positive is a negative, right? They flip-flop, they're opposites. But you also would know that if there's not a number in front of x, there's always an imaginary one, right? Which how can I get rid of a negative one x? 
We could either multiply both sides by negative one or divide both sides by negative one. Either way, right, a negative one times a negative one is gonna get me a positive one x, which is just x. Do it to both sides and we get that x is negative 11. Now we have to be careful when we're checking this because a lot of people wanna be like, okay, 14 equals three minus 11. That does not work, I must have done something wrong. But if you look at it a little closer, you'll see our equation is three minus x, and then our x is negative 11. So it's not just 11 that goes there, it's negative 11, which a double negative we should know turns into just a big plus or addition sign, which three plus 11 is 14, and that one does work out. Our answer is negative 11. And five, same thing, our x is on the right-hand side, so we're going to get rid of the numbers on the right side of the equal sign which you'll notice we have a negative six and a two. Okay, our negative six is being added on, or you could think of it as minus six because plus a negative six is the same thing as minus six. Either way, it's either add or subtract there. We have an exponent, which remember we're going in reverse order. So we're gonna start with our add and subtract and then do our exponent. All right, so we have a negative six being added on to x squared. So how would we get negative six to zero? Right, we would have to add six, right? Negative six plus six would get us zero plus x squared, which is just x squared. Gotta do it to both sides, right? A lot of people will wanna like add the six over here, go to the other side of the equal sign. That's what separates them. Okay, so add six to both sides, we get 16. And now with our squared, you can either stop and think, okay, what times itself gets me 16? You probably know that off the top of your head. Otherwise, there is an opposite operation. Just like to get rid of plus three, we would subtract three. To get rid of multiply by five, we would divide by five. To get rid of squared, we do square root. So if you didn't know what times itself gets you 16, you could do square root of 16, which would get you four. Let's go ahead and check that. So exponents first, so four squared would be 16, plus a negative six. 16 minus six would get us 10. That works. However, four is not the only number that if you multiply it by itself, it gets you 16. Right? Because remember, a negative times a negative also gets you a positive. So let's try negative 4 as an answer. Let's plug that in and evaluate and see if that would work as well. All right, we want our x squared. So negative 4 times negative 4 would get us a positive 16 plus negative 6. Again, works out to get us 10. All right, so you'll notice the problems where you end with x squared equals something, you're actually gonna have two answers because of the way that squared and negatives work, right? Positive four squared and negative four squared get you the same thing. And then our last one here, there's actually two different options you could do. So you could go ahead and distribute your two onto each and then just solve it like a normal two-step equation. Okay, but you could also look at it as x plus 5 and this thing outside, right? When we distribute, we're multiplying. So we're taking that whole x plus 5 times 2, right? Which, how do we get rid of times 2? We would divide the whole thing by 2, do it to both sides, right? 2 over 2 would get me 1. So then I'm just left with x plus 5 equals 18 divided by 2, which is 9, subtract our five from both sides to get that x equals four. Now, if we would have distributed, let me show you how that would work. So two times x is two x, two times five is 10, and we have that plus in between, equals 18, and then just solve how we were before. Get rid of your plus or minus first, we get two x equals eight, divide both sides by two, and we get x equals four. Notice both times we got four, so it should be the right answer, but let's go ahead and check it. Two, then in parentheses, our x, which we say is four, 
plus 5 equals 18. 4 plus 5 would get us 9. Times that 2 would get us 18. So 4 would be the correct answer. You can do it either way, whichever makes the most sense to you. All right, so notice in the first way we did it, we were looking at this x plus 5 as a grouping. Um, so that means that this would be parentheses and we would do it last. Where when we went ahead and distributed it out, it was no longer grouped. So we could go ahead and get rid of it first. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. My next video is going to be on multi-step equations, so more than two steps. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that next one. And go ahead and comment down below what you would like to see next. I'm needing some ideas. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.